Yeah, I've taught I've taught my first section in in high school. We got an example of what? Do you want to do an example? Is there something they can do? Pick one and do it, or? Okay. No, I think we're going to do an example just yet. No, they were just definitions and things like that. We're talking about velocity of a wave, we're talking about wavelength, we're talking about frequency and period. I'm just throwing out many different words at you guys. So now let's just talk about the more natural nature of waves. There are three properties that a wave exhibits. Can anyone tell me what they are? Yeah, we can look at the book. Just have properties? Yep. It has a, a vibrating source. Okay, we're talking about the waves itself, not how to get not how not how to produce the waves. Yeah. <laughs> but it's good, that's that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> So anyone? Properties of a wave? What? Not one problem. Can a wave reflect? Yes. Okay, so now find the other two properties for me. <laughs> <laughs> so we can reflect, refract, and diffract. So we're restricting our arguments now to sound waves. And when would you, Miss Claudius, when would you ever see a sound wave reflecting? Is it just bouncing off the room, right? Uh, in the pack, you wouldn't see it, but you'd notice that yeah, okay. you sit into one spot. You can hear the sound coming directly at you, and you can also hear the sound reflecting off the roof. And so they can sound kind of out. And if you're in a big building like the old Bursal Dome, there's even a second difference between the original sound and the other one. Okay, so yeah, that's, that's an example of reflection. Refraction, it's just kind of like a bending of a wave. So let's say the wave, I'm not going to draw, I'm not going to draw this anymore, right? I'm just going to draw like that. Let's say a wave comes this way. Has anyone ever seen a glass of water and you put a straw in it and, and the straw kind of looks like that? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so that is refraction. It's like the, the bending of light because the wave has slowed down or sped up. So, yes, when the wave slows down or speeds up. We can't talk about anything now. We can't talk about why that happens because we haven't reached light yet. Does anyone know what diffraction is? Yes. When there's like two, there's other two boundaries and when the sound goes in between the small gap, it spreads out because like the sound is going straight and then when it hits the gap it goes in a semicircle sort of shape. Yeah that's pretty much what diffraction is. It's refraction is bending of a wave because the wave has slowed down or sped up. Diffraction is kind of it goes through a slit we call it an aperture and it kind of bends around and spreads out. So how many of you have like 7.1 surround sound speakers at home? Five, five point one. Okay, good, good enough, good enough. <laughs> Better than me, dude. I, I use headphones. Oh, okay. So, how many of you notice there's like many speakers for high frequencies, and there's just one big low frequency one under your TV? That's because the bigger the wavelength, the more it diffracts. So you only need one of those to produce. 
the same amount of diffraction as those like three to four speakers that produce a high sound. Am I being a bit too abstract? And that's and that's pretty much five point two done. We can demo diffraction. Uh, what the laser pointer? Um, yeah, we could we could do the laser pointer. Well, one. Only one or we slide. could do it with macro particles. And uh, I don't know if you've ever seen this. Do you have a water tank? Before. A water tank is just hitting it and the waves different. Something simpler than that. Something slim, simpler. Simpler. I'm going to go off the camera for a little bit. Yeah, you're going to camera. So I'll say that again. I want Lloyd, you to walk to the center of the door. And you other four, you two on either side, I want you to walk straight ahead. And when you get to the door frame, I want you to keep going straight as hard as you can. And we'll see what happens. Um, if you get too violent, I'll give you an E. Go. <laughs> Oh, there's five of them. <laughs> okay, stop. <laughs> Page 192 talks about like, these little circles. We call them wave fronts. And basically, just each line just represents the maximum of the wave. So, let's, let's just assume I have a transverse wave. We call this point the max or the, or the crest and we call this the minimum or the trial so basically this part here will be the trial and this green line is the crest now the reason why we have to represent it this way is because as we were talking about diffraction, let's say I have a little slit here like that, and it's a distance d, and I have a wave coming through with a wavelength of lambda. Actually, I should probably draw it as wave fronts. <laughs> So when lambda is approximately the same size as d, then we get a maximum diffraction. Yeah. And yeah, that's about all I'm going to say today about waves. Just giving you an introduction because where's the next class? Tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll start on the real wave stuff. So this is an introduction. Yeah, well, thank you very much. It's my first time. Thank you.